When Canon launched the R-Series cameras way back in 2018, they introduced a brand new shooting mode called Flexible Priority, or FV mode. This mode is possibly the most useful shooting mode within the R-Series lineup, as it's been included in every other R-Series mirrorless camera ever since. It's possibly gone a little bit unnoticed within the Canon user community, and I feel that it probably hasn't had the attention it deserves. It's a shooting mode that allows you to balance control of the camera with speed of shooting. The FV mode allows you to quickly change the camera from an automatic setup into shutter priority or aperture priority, or even into a fully manual control setup. It's a very useful shooting mode if you're in a situation where you're having to change shooting modes quickly, or if you're in a situation where conditions change frequently. I found this setup to be extremely useful when I was away on safari, uh, a few months ago, back in July 2022. I was beginning to use the FV mode more than shutter priority mode. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of how to set up a custom shooting mode using the flexible priority or the FV mode for wildlife photography. And I'm also going to include how to set up a quick menu system to allow you to change key settings quicker and more efficiently. So before we set up the custom shooting mode using the flexible priority auto exposure, I'm gonna take you through the other shooting modes that are already set up. So we have scene intelligent auto, then we have the flexible priority auto exposure, then we have the program auto exposure, and then we have the usual settings of the shutter priority auto exposure, aperture priority auto exposure, manual exposure, and then we have the bulb setting for very long exposures. And then we have the three custom shooting modes that can be fully customized. So to start things off, we're gonna scroll all the way back to the flexible priority auto exposure. At the bottom of the display, you should see TV, AV and ISO all showing auto. So the first thing I'm gonna change is an image quality. I'm gonna change raw to C raw and I'm gonna change the JPEG quality to L. Um, next, I'm gonna move on to ISO speed range settings. I'm gonna set the minimum to L, which is 50, and I'm gonna set the maximum to, to 12,800. You can set it to whatever you feel like, but the auto range, I'm gonna change, um, I'm gonna set it to 100, and I'm gonna set the maximum uh, up to 6,400 and I'm gonna scroll forward to the shutter mode and you have three options here, mechanical, electronic first curtain and electronic. So depending on your situation, uh, you, you can set the shutter mode. I'm gonna set it to electronic first curtain. Image stabilization mode, I'm gonna to set to be on. And then for touch shutter, I'm going to disable that. So I don't wanna accidentally uh, take photos by brushing against the, the menu screen. And then for the AF operation, you wanna set it to servo AF. The AF method needs to be on tracking. And subject to detect needs to be animals. If you're shooting wildlife, obviously you can change that for whatever your shooting situation. Now the eye detection needs to be enabled and the continuous AF can actually be disabled. It doesn't actually need to be on. So MF peaking settings, just in case you have to go into manual mode, I wanna turn the peaking on. I'm going to turn the level to be high. Again, you can set whatever settings you want. The focus guide is really useful, so I'm going to turn that on. So now we go into Servo AF, and you have five different options. You have uh, one, two, three, four, and auto. Uh, so again, depending on your situation and uh, what you're shooting and your environment, you can select whatever you feel like. Uh, I prefer to leave it on auto. I find that's the, the best option for general shooting. Uh, we're going to go scroll through, we're going to go straight through to playback. The one thing I do like to change within the playback section is the AF point display. I like to set that to be enabled. Now what this allows you to do, you're able to, when you, when you play back your photos on the LCD screen, you can see where the camera is focused. And so it's really good for checking the performance of the autofocus settings. Then I'm going to go into the wireless features, I'm going to set airplane mode to be on. So that's gonna cut all the signals, so it's gonna help save the battery. 
Then in the setup section, it, under record function card folder selection, I'm going to set the camera to record photos onto separate cards. Uh, record options, I'm going to auto switch card. Uh, so playback is on the first card, record play is also on the first card. But the photos will record to the separate cards. So C raw will go to the Compact Express card and JPEGs will go to the SD card. Uh, file numbering can be set to continuous. Uh, you can do an auto reset here, but I don't really see the point. You might as well just set it to continuous. Then you're going to avoid any sort of uh, file name conflicts when importing the files. You can kind of create folders and change the folder name if you want to do that. Um, I generally don't bother. And again, with file name, you can change the file name depending on the situation and the shoot that you're doing. Maybe you want to customize the file name uh, for every shoot that you do, but you will have to go back in every single time and change this. This won't change automatically. So generally, I just leave it on the default settings. So still within the setup section, we're going to scroll through and we're gonna to get to eco mode and power saving options. So we're gonna turn eco mode on. That's gonna override all the power saving options that you have. So eco mode is gonna turn the camera off after literally a few seconds. It's gonna really help save your battery. Uh, we're gonna scroll through, we don't need anything here. We're gonna come back to custom shooting modes later. So into custom functions, we're gonna change exposure level increments to one third and also ISO speed increments to one third. We don't need to change anything else here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna change, and this is quite important because we're setting the camera up primarily for wildlife shooting, and that's the uh, set shutter speed range. So we're gonna restrict the camera to operate between certain parameters within the shutter speed range. So at the moment, the camera can go all the way down to 30 seconds, and in the lowest speed, all the way up to one four thousandth of a second. So we're gonna set it to one 250th. Now the highest speed, we're going to set it to one eight thousandth of a second. That is the maximum that the camera can actually operate at. But we can easily go back to this and change the lowest speed. So at the moment, we're going to set it to one 250th. We're going to set the camera up so this can be changed very, very quickly without having to go through the entire menu system. So we're going to add that to a quick menu at the end of the video. Okay, so moving on, we're going to come back to customize buttons later. So now we're gonna take the opportunity to scroll back to the setup section of the menu. And we're gonna access the custom shooting mode, C1 to C3. And we are going to register the changes that we've made so far. And we're gonna register those to the C3 custom shooting mode. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I've already assigned a custom setup to C1 and also to C2. So I'm gonna use C3. But you can use uh, any one that you want, C1, C2, C3. But I'm also going to set the auto update setting to be enabled. So any changes that we now make are going to be registered to the C3 custom shooting mode, as long as we're in the C3 mode. So now I'm going to come out of the menu system and I'm going to now scroll through the various shooting modes and I'm going to select C3 FV. These are all the changes that we've made so far. So you should be able to see at the top left corner, it says C3 FV. And at the bottom, I'm scrolling through TV, AV and ISO and everything's set to auto. Now, while we're on the LCD display screen, I'm going to take the time to change the drive mode. And I'm gonna set the drive mode to high speed continuous plus. That's because we're setting the camera up for wildlife shooting. Now, you, obviously you can change that at a later time. Now, this change would have been reflected in our custom shooting mode because we had auto update to be enabled. So any changes that we make uh, are automatically saved within that custom shooting mode. So now we're gonna come out of the setup section and we're gonna go back to the customization section and we're gonna customize the buttons to set up the back button focusing. So the first thing is we want to take the shutter button and on half press, we want to set that to metering start instead of metering AF. So this is basically taking the focusing away from the actual shutter button and only allowing it to actually physically take a picture because we're going to assign 
the back button focusing to the AF on buttons and also the exposure lock buttons. So firstly with the AF on button you can see that eye detection AF has already been assigned to that button. I'm going to select that by pressing the set OK and I'm now going to scroll back through the various options and I'm going to select metering and AF start. And now I'm going to go to the AE lock button, the auto exposure lock button, and I'm going to select the eye detection auto focusing. So now I have two buttons on the back of the camera that have been assigned to be my focusing buttons, while the actual shutter button is literally just taking the picture. So now there is no focusing functionality whatsoever to the actual shutter button. It's all been assigned to buttons on the back of the camera. Okay, so the next thing we're going to change I'm going to scroll down to what is by default called the DOF preview button and I'm going to scroll through the menu selection that we have for customization and I'm going to select uh, it's quite a way down I'm going to select the cropping aspect ratio function to be assigned to the button that's on the front of the camera now this function will allow you to quickly access the various different crop modes and aspect ratios that the sensor on the R5 in particular is capable of doing. So you can go from full frame to 1.6 times crop to 1x1 one one aspect ratio, 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios. So for example if we select the 1.6x crop mode we're now getting a 17 megapixel image on the R5 camera. And to know that we're in the crop mode, we have the 1.6x icon on the right side of the screen. And then going back to full frame, you can see there's a full icon in the right side of the screen. Now, the reason for assigning the front button on the camera uh, with this functionality just provides a really quick and easy way of accessing the crop modes on the R5 and also the R6. But on the R5, you're still getting a 17 megapixel image, so that's perfectly usable. This is a really useful method if you're using prime lenses, especially the long telephoto lenses. Now, on a recent safari trip, I had the privilege of being able to use one of the new uh, RF 400 millimeter prime lenses, uh, an amazing lens that it is. But, of course, being on safari means that you're probably going to be uh, in a vehicle and you can't really get out and move around. So you can't focus with your feet. So you are stuck with 400 millimeters. You can use a teleconverter, but that's a little bit difficult to put a teleconverter on and off when you're photographing wildlife. So the next best thing is to use the 1.6 crop mode. I found it to be extremely useful being able to um, compose more shots within camera. I mean, you can do it in post-production perfectly fine. It's not a problem, but it's just nicer being able to get closer to your subject. So I found myself using that crop mode quite often to be able to zoom in on certain subjects and zoom back out again. Okay, so that basically wraps up the um, back button focusing setup and the customization. And of course, remember that was on the R5. Um, things might be slightly different on the R3 and also the R6 and R7 cameras. Um, also worth noting that all of those changes that have been made have been reflected within that custom shooting mode because we had the auto update to be enabled. Now, just to prove that the customization of the buttons has been reflected and saved within that custom shooting mode, I'm going to just go back into the menu. You can see that I'm in C3FV mode. I'm gonna check the customized buttons and you can see that the changes that we made are there, they've been saved. I'm gonna come out uh, back into the shooting mode and I'm gonna select C1P, which is the previous shooting mode that I set up and I'm going to access the custom buttons and you can see that it's a completely different set of customized buttons that have been saved against that shooting mode. So I'm going to now go back to C3FV and you can see that completely different set of buttons. And it's all because we had auto update was set to be enabled within the custom shooting mode. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the FV mode and how it works. So FV basically stands for flexible value. It's a great way to balance the control of the camera with your speed of shooting. The FV mode allows you to quickly change the camera from a fully automatic setup 
to a shutter priority or aperture priority mode or into a fully manual mode setup. This is really useful when changing shooting modes frequently if you're working in challenging conditions or when situations change quickly. I found it to be a good setup for wildlife photography while I was on safari back in July 2022. So when using flexible value shooting mode, all modes will start out in automatic. The underscore indicates that it's being set automatically by the camera. You can use the control dials to scroll along the exposure settings to change a selected variable from auto to manual control. So you can go from being fully automatic to a TV mode by changing the shutter speed setting. The aperture and ISO values will then automatically adjust for the correct exposure. So basically, it's like shooting in shutter priority mode. This will also apply to the aperture setting as well. So it's possible to switch very quickly depending on your situation from an automatic setup to have full control over shutter speed and aperture or change from fully automatic exposure to have manual control of the camera. The camera will adjust the ISO value exposure automatically if it's set to auto ISO. There is also full control over the exposure compensation. So just a quick note on how to reset the, the values and the exposure settings. So you can press the erase button on the back of the camera, which is the kind of trash can icon. So you can press once to reset a single value, say shutter speed or aperture. And if you press for longer, it will actually reset all the values across the entire exposure settings. So that'll be shutter speed, aperture, exposure compensation and ISO values. So if you press down for longer on the trash can, the arrays icon, it will reset everything back to auto. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and set up the quick menu that is associated with the FV mode. Uh, so to do that, we have to scroll all the way across to the green section of the menu system. And then we have to select items to register. So the first one I'm gonna select is the image quality and next I'm going to select uh, ISO speed. Now I'm going to go through the reason why I'm going to be selecting these uh, later in the video. Uh, so the third one I'm going to select is the shutter mode and we can select up to six items for the quick menu. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select the uh, subject to detect, so which is in the autofocus section of the menu system. And then a little bit further down, I'm going to select the servo AF. Uh, so I'll go through all of these, the reasons why, and some more technical detail on each of these uh, items I'm selecting for the quick menu. Uh, so the next one I'm going to select is much, much further down, uh, going into the customization section of the menu system. So it's quite a long way down. But the one I'm going to select is quite an important one if you're doing wildlife photography, I think. And it is actually the set shutter speed range. So I think we picked up on this earlier in the video. We need to have really quick access to some of these functions to be able to change them very, very quickly. Part of the setup of the camera to allow us to work quickly and efficiently. So we can set a maximum of six items for the quick menu and we can reconfigure all of these as well. If we just go into the configure and then sort registered items, we can now select the items that we've added to the menu and we can start to rearrange the order whatever preference that we prefer. We can delete selected items by selecting delete item from my menu and then pressing the uh, set button to okay. Uh, we can delete all items in the tab if we just wanna restart everything. And we can just delete the entire tab if we feel that it's not really needed anymore. And we can also rename the tab to something that is easier for us to remember or easier for us to understand. So I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call it Wildlife 01. It's specific to my wildlife shooting and my wildlife setup. So for me, this is Wildlife 01. And after this, we can always make a second menu. If we feel that six isn't enough, we can create a second quick menu. I think you can create up to five or six quick menus, all set up for various different things. Okay, so that menu has now been set and you can see in the top right, it's been renamed Wildlife 01. So if we 
go to the configure tab we can now add another menu and we can start to configure that in the same way that we configured wildlife 01 so now i'm just going to go through the reason for the selection so iso i set the automatic maximum to be 6400 maybe you'd want to go in and change that the iso speed range is set to 6400 so maybe you want to push that even further or you want to constrain that so image quality i've selected c raw there might be situations where you want to select uh, raw instead or if your memory cards are really running out then maybe you want to select a lower quality jpeg shutter mode is a really important one for me you might want to quickly change between mechanical electronic first curtain and electronic mode depending on the situation and the environment that you're in and what you're shooting for the subject to detect this has been added because you might want to quickly change the subject of the autofocus this has been set for animals to begin with because it's a wildlife setup so maybe if you're changing your subject you might want to go in quickly and change the subject preset now we have the servo af mode so by default i've set this to auto because i find it very difficult to see any difference between the five different settings but this allows you to quickly go in and change the autofocus settings if you feel the need to do that so the final item that we added to the quick menu is set shutter speed. Now this has been added because it's a wildlife setup and I like to constrain the shutter speed. So I'm basically telling the camera not to go below a certain value. Uh, normally I leave it at around 250th of a second or 500th of a second, but there could be situations where you're shooting birds in flight and you might want to go in there very, very quickly and put the minimum shutter speed to something like one 1,000th one or one two thousandths of a second um, it's a bit of a fail safe really because you know that the camera isn't going to go below uh, that shutter speed it's going to adjust the aperture and the ISO accordingly uh, so that so that you can maintain a very very fast shutter speed without really having to think too much about it it kind of takes one element out of the exposure settings that you don't have to worry about it's almost like you've got a automatic exposure setting but you're actually still in control of the shutter speed okay so let's go back into the menu and let's select for example servo af and maybe we want to change that for something else maybe we feel that that's not really necessary so we can go and delete item from my menu and then we can go into the full menu selection and we can select another item to register and I think it's probably best to replace that with another item from the AF section so we're going to select uh, tracking sensitivity and we're going to hit menu to go back so now you can see that tracking sensitivity is actually greyed out and it's because it's not available because the associate function settings in servo AF so what we need to do now is that we have to go back into the autofocus settings of the camera and we have to select either um, case one two three or four basically we need to take it off auto setting so the tracking sensitivity will be grayed out because of the fact that auto was selected so you can see now that tracking sensitivity is now active you need to look out for things like that sometimes parts of the menu system will be grayed out and it's because um, a parameter has been set or something has been selected within the menu system that will prevent something else from working so you need to keep an eye on that now if we go back into tracking sensitivity and this is re I'm really just using this as an example now we can quickly go into that tracking sensitivity menu item and we can start to adjust the tracking uh, focusing and if you hit on info it it will give you more information about the tracking sensitivity and how it works and the reason why we should add it to the menu item or a quick menu item uh, it can be quite useful if you're really struggling with the autofocusing or the AF tracking system or the eye detection system so what I'm going to do next I'm going to reconfigure this menu list I'm going to go to sort registered items I'm going to select tracking sensitivity and I'm going to push it above the shutter speed range under subject to detect it's just easier to select because I have all the autofocus menu items together so now just hit the menu button to go back and now we are in our quick menu this menu system or any quick menu that you set up is not specific to any shooting mode or any custom shooting mode that you create so that menu system will be available for the standard shooting modes and it will also be available for the custom shooting modes that you've created so for example if you're in C3 FV mode that we've just created if 
you go into the menu, you'll see that your quick menu is there and you can access all the menu items. If we come out of there and we select the aperture priority shooting mode and then we hit the menu, you'll see that the exact same quick menu Wildlife 01 is still available. So that will be available for any shooting mode that you select. Certain items will be greyed out if they're not active. So for example, you can see tracking sensitivity, which was set to auto has been greyed out because that's not active within that shooting mode or the setup of that shooting mode. So to activate that, we would have to go through the menu system back to the uh, AF section of the menu and we would have to set a servo AF mode to be either one, two, three or four. Um, at the moment I'm just going to leave it on auto because for aperture priority I don't need um, servo AF anyway. Um, but it's just a quick uh, reminder or just to make you aware that the menu items on the quick menu are active for every single shooting mode, regardless of the custom mode that you've set up. The difference is, one thing that you need to be aware of is that the values within those menu items will remain within that custom shooting mode. So for example, I'm in aperture priority mode now. If I set the shutter speed range, you can see that it's 30 seconds to one eight thousandth of a second. So that's what I need, that's the default setting and also in image quality is set to RAW and JPEG L. So now, if I change the mode back to C3 FV and I hit menu and I um, look at the uh, quick menu, I can see the image quality is C RAW, which is what we set it to, and the set shutter speed range is 250th of a second lower speed, which is what we set. So the values, the variables within these menu items have stayed the same. So these quick menu setups work completely independently from custom shooting modes and the standard shooting modes. Um, however, if you're currently working within a custom shooting mode, what you have selected within your quick menu will be saved within that custom shooting mode, as long as the auto update has been enabled. All of your settings will be remembered when you change back to your custom shooting mode from a standard shooting mode. Okay, so now that we've set a custom shooting mode, we've also uh, created a quick menu to go with that custom shooting mode. Um, now, and this is a little bit annoying, but you're going to have to go back into one of the standard shooting modes, like Aperture Priority, for example, and you're going to have to reset everything back to a default. If you don't do that, you're going to be picking up the camera and it's going to be automatically in your wildlife shooting setup, which you won't want because that's the whole point of assigning those menu items and assigning those settings and that setup to a custom shooting mode. So we're going to have to go back into, for example, Aperture Priority and I'm going to start to go through the menu system and I'm going to change the uh, C raw back to raw. I'm going to go into ISO speed settings. I'm happy with that, I think, anyway, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Shutter mode, I'm okay with. Electronic first curtain. So AF operation, one shot. AF method to uh, one point AF. Subject to detect to none. Um, and servo AF to auto. So that's kind of like my default settings, basically. Um, airplane mode off, so all my connections are back. I'm going to turn eco mode off. And I'm going to scroll across to the custom functions and I'm going to set shutter speed back down to 30 seconds, which is the default anyway. And in customize buttons, I'm going to uh, reset metering and AF start to, to the first option and some of the other buttons are now reset back to what they were, the default setup. Okay, so it didn't take too long to go through the camera's menu system and reset some of the settings. It's only really a few things anyway. So now on the main LCD display, I'm going to change the shooting mode or the drive mode to single shooting. So now I know that the camera has kind of been reset back to a default setting or my default settings but what I still have is my custom shooting mode so if I go back into C3 FV I can see that the changes that I've made within this tutorial are still there so they've been saved 
Um, that's the whole point of setting up a custom shooting mode is that you can switch it to C1, 2 or 3 and you've instantly got uh, your custom shooting mode ready and the rest of the camera is set to your kind of default setup. Well, that was an extremely long video. Thank you so much for sticking around. It's very much appreciated. Apologies for such a long video, but I do really feel like this covers a lot of information about the flexible priority mode and also the setup of custom functions and the creation of a quick menu system. The quick menu system alone will help you work much quicker, much more efficiently, especially with the Canon autofocusing system. Please give the video a like, give it a share and also subscribe to my channel as I have many other videos regarding the Canon mirrorless R-series cameras.